32 centuries ago, Franciscan Padres explored California's rugged wilderness to establish a chain of missions. The route of the missions from southern to northern California was a long and tortuous journey. But today, we follow this same trail in exactly nine hours and 45 minutes, from sunrise to sunset. And here's our modern trailblazer, Southern Pacific Swift Streamlined Daylight, most beautiful train in America. 12 glistening cars behind a powerful streamlined locomotive. From San Francisco, storied city of gold and adventure, a swift daylight leaves each morning. At the same time, another daylight whirls out of Los Angeles, Southern California's great vacation city, a city of broad and beautiful thoroughfares and busy streets. Under a friendly sun, Southern California's miles of green groves yield a world-famous orange crop. Long sunny beaches invite you to lie in the sun or ride the breakers. Of course, movies are made here, for not far from Los Angeles are hundreds of natural scenes under a constantly smiling sky, scenes that vary from sea level to the tops of green mountains. But let's hurry to the Los Angeles station. The daylight waits for no man. And here she is, beautifully streamlined in red, orange, and black, ready to speed us northward to San Francisco. The daylight porters are picked men, very happy and proud of their colorful uniforms and their train. And they should be, for the daylight holds an enviable world's record for the number of passengers carried. It's a swift train, pulled by the largest streamlined engines ever built, including the tender, 109 feet long. Many of the cars are joined together in two car units. Others have tight lock couplings that assure smooth starting and stopping. One minute to go and the engineer climbs aboard. Doors are sealed tight to keep out noise and dust. Modern air conditioning constantly circulates fresh air through every car. All aboard! And we're off on one of the finest daylight trips in the world. The mighty drive wheels ready to pull us 471 miles. Up the sunny California coastline, following the ancient trail of the missions to San Francisco. It's another great day in the life of a great train. We leave Los Angeles slowly, but soon the daylight will be rolling 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. We make ourselves comfortable in the luxurious chair cars as the scenery spins past. Each of these cars has its own distinctive color design. This one, with light apricot walls, has contrasting jade green seat covers. And the seats, which swing to face the windows, can be adjusted to a semi-reclining position. What grand windows, double wide with two panes of glass. No craning your neck to see the scenery here. And with the lovely San Fernando Valley flying past, it's perfectly polite to point out the window. bores through a mountain on the way to the ocean. Back in the parlor car, you will find individual seats and extra comforts of luxury travel. The daylight rides like a dream, a swift streak of color against the green hills of California. Near the city of Ventura, we get our first glimpse of the Blue Pacific. 
From here, we follow the ocean for more than a hundred miles. As we skim along, a morning snack tastes especially good and is really inexpensive in the modern coffee shop, which is trimmed in glistening aluminum and equipped like the coffee shop in any fine hotel. What's this? Oil derrick, right out of the ocean at Summerlin. Oil out of the water, a most unusual sight. The daylight's first stop, that lovely hillside city of tall palms and Spanish architecture, San Barbara. Banked on the velvety slopes of hills, its palatial homes and gardens overlook the ever-blue horizon of the Pacific. All kinds of pleasure boats ride peacefully at anchor at Santa Barbara. And outdoor sports not only include a spirited chucker of polo, but an occasional dance to castanets and guitars. Santa Barbara's venerable mission is one of the oldest and most beautiful. Again, our swift daylight follows the scalloped shoreline, the foam-washed beaches, the rugged cliffs and headlands. Every view from your seat is a picture, a picture painted by an artist generous with his blues, greens, and reds. At Pismo, the daylight leaves the ocean and races up into the foothills climbing swiftly through an area of little farms and clusters of oak trees. But wait a minute, it's lunchtime. And it looks as if the chef had something special there, the way he's fussing over it. We'll enjoy a hearty meal, served on tableware and linen, especially designed for the daylight. This, my friends, is real luxury eating typically delicious Southern Pacific food. While out the window, the trees and rolling hills of California pass in review. These people have ordered Southern Pacific's famous salad bowl, and they can have as many helpings as they wish. It's an old Southern Pacific custom. Well, here's the halfway point on our trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco. It's San Luis Obispo where the daylight gets a fresh locomotive, another streamlined beauty, all tuned up and polished, ready to take us down the home stretch. two million dollars on wheels, here it is as the two daylights meet and pass. The southbound daylight has swept by, headed for Los Angeles. The parlor observation car is a magnificent example of modern train design. Here are deep, soft chairs, thick carpets, a great place from which to enjoy some of California's grandest scenery. The smiling porter sees that everyone is comfortable. As you relax in your seat, the train speeds on, climbing now, winding up the coast range, along the tops of rounded hills and through deep canyons. A land of cattle ranches and far-flung acres, once owned by the Spanish Don. Little did these early settlers imagine a day when a hotel on wheels would roll through their wooded estates, nor did the toiling padres vision a mighty train that someday would follow their footsteps. As the daylight approaches the crest of the mountains, it nearly doubles back on itself. This is Horseshoe Curve, one of Southern Pacific's engineering achievements. From your comfortable seat, you can see our engine across the way. 
And thus does the daylight. A giant locomotive and 12 gleaming cars challenge and conquer the bold heights of the California Coast Range. And now we're over the top and speeding downhill through verdant foothills near Paso Robles. Watch closely, we're passing Mission San Miguel, another historic structure built by the Mission Fathers. Even today, many of the missions are still occupied by the Padres. Many still hold church services in their quaint old chapels. On and on our daylight drive, keeping exactly on schedule and pausing at Salinas, an interesting community in the heart of the world's lettuce bowl. Out of the rich Salinas Valley come tons of lettuce. Three times each year it is harvested, ice packed, and shipped throughout the country. Ride them, cowboy! Look out there! The wild and woolly Salinas Rodeo has the biggest attendance of any western roundup. Not far west of Salinas is the former capital of California, Old Monterey, headquarters of a busy fishing fleet. Center of the majestic Monterey Peninsula, where cypress and pine-covered mountains overlook the sea. Here, near the famous 17-mile drive, are miles of widening bridle path, carpeted with pine needles and overhung with spreading trees and a blue sky. Great is the charm of the Monterey Peninsula. Artists and writers come here to live, taking inspiration from the climbing mountain slopes, the quiet gardens, the ever-present roll and boom of the surf. Of all the scenes here, this is the most famous, Cypress Point. Championship golf courses spread across the Monterey shoreline, each green fairway offering a test of skill and a pleasant natural hazard in the sound of waves against the shore. The Monterey Peninsula is a favorite playground for Californians and for hundreds of out-of-state visitors each year. Seals seem to like swimming and diving in the deep blue water. These are real sea lions. Just a million dollars worth of fur coats having fun. Headquarters for sport and vacations on the Monterey Peninsula is famous Hotel Del Monte, a fashionable haven of rest and play, where at one time or another, many of the world's notables have enjoyed the golf and the swimming. And who wouldn't? Quiet and isolated are the meadows and groves of the Monterey Peninsula, yet a convenient side trip on Southern Pacific lines. Across Monterey Bay, another vacation retreat and sunny beach resort, Santa Cruz. Thousands come here to frolic along the smooth bathing beach and visit the famous casino. Nearby are the mammoth red groves of the Santa Cruz big trees. But we're back on board the daylight as it glides along. Here we are in the unique tavern car, seated in the cozy leather booth and enjoying the company of congenial travelers. Fill the glasses to the top if you like. Not a drop spilled on the smooth trip. Outside, the verdant Santa Clara Valley swirls past. There's a short stop at San Jose, thriving city in the hub of this productive valley. 
Southern Pacific's news station is one of the show places of the town. Then we move northward again, past the quiet grounds of Santa Clara University and her fine old mission. Next, Palo Alto, home of Stanford University, peacefully nestled on the San Francisco Peninsula, a broad oak-covered campus and graceful buildings. San Francisco next stop, and the ladies rush off to the daylight's immaculate dressing rooms for a last-minute adjustment of curls and makeup, big mirrors, and a lady's maid to help them. And they'll be all prettied up to meet friends in San Francisco. Here comes the daylight. The big streamlined flyer slides into San Francisco's Third Street station, draws up to the platform, on time to the second. And what a wonderful trip that was. Nine hours and 45 minutes seem like 45 minutes on this train. And now, let's see the town, San Francisco. What adventurous tales have been told of her mighty hills and romantic waterfront. One of the world's great story cities. From Knob Hill, we see Old Telegraph Hill, historic lookout for ships arriving from around the Horn. Here we see the famous Golden Gate with its unbelievable Golden Gate Bridge. From the Marin County Hills, a view of San Francisco is completely dominated by this massive structure. It is the longest single span in the world, an engineering triumph, clearing the highest ocean liner and reaching more than a mile over the swift tides of the gate. And out in the bay is Alcatraz Island, the rock, where our best public enemies are spending their time these days. Yes, all this is San Francisco, a gay metropolis of fashionable shops, fine hotels, and slender skyscrapers shooting upward to overlook the city that adventure built. Of course, we'll see Chinatown, where exotic restaurants, brightly colored shops, and fantastic shaped temples make up the largest Chinese city outside the Orient. And by all means, we'll include another spectacular bridge, the massive Bay Bridge, climbing across the horizon more than eight miles to join San Francisco with her sister cities, Oakland, Alameda, and Berkeley. San Francisco is the center of the Southern Pacific Rail Lines. Four scenic routes from the east meet here, each passing through a different part of the United States. The Shasta route runs to California from the Evergreen Northwest, past snow-capped Mount Shasta. The Golden State route speeds from Chicago direct to Los Angeles, offering a thrilling side trip to Carlsbad Caverns National Park. The Sunset route joins romantic New Orleans with the Southwest and California. The Overland route crosses the heart of the continent, from Chicago across the Rockies and Great Salt Lake to San Francisco. Over these four scenic routes speed the celebrated trains of the Southern Pacific System. A never-ending parade of speed and comfort and service. There's a fine train for every purse. on one Southern Pacific route, return on another Southern Pacific route, and ride the daylight, America's most beautiful streamlined train.